G'day everyone. As you've probably seen from a lot of the videos I've been putting out on my YouTube channel, more and more DBAs are having to spend more and more time dealing with not just rows and columns, but unstructured data. That means a lot of segments in the database which are going to be plobs, blobs, XML types, JSON documents, etc. We have to manage all these things which are stored as physically different segments in the database. And that can be some challenging stuff when it comes to managing all those names floating around in your DBA segments table. Let's have a look at an example of why that can get a bit complicated. So the first thing I'll do is just for our SQL Plus demo here, I'm doing a couple of new value commands here to make sure that we can remember these things called first and second lobs. The relevance of that will become apparent shortly. So we're gonna create a table here called people. It's gonna be a very simple version of our people table. It's got ID and name. The key columns for us, I'm gonna have an address column, which is a clob, could be a very long address. And I'm going to have a headshot column. Uh, the term headshot here is a, a organizational picture, not someone you know, doing this. So we're gonna have a clob and a blob, and let's insert a sample row. It's gonna be someone called Bailey, there's their address, and their picture in this case is just some raw hex data that's stored in the blob column. Let's commit that off and do some exploring. Here's the challenge when it comes to dealing with lobs in the Oracle database. I know that I've created a table called person, and I know that because I've got some clobs and blobs, they will be separate segments. I can go look at what those segments are in my user segments view, and you can see, well, there's a whole bunch of things there called sys, il, sys, lob, etc. It's a bit hard to work out which one of those associated with my person table. Now, there is a way of finding that out. If we dig into the data dictionary, we can see there's a user lobs data dictionary view. That's the one that associates each clob or blob you have in your table with the appropriate segment name. So we can see here for my people table in the address column, it's got syslob92777, etc. And same thing for the headshot. I've got two lob segments there that are associated with columns in my table. If you're wondering where those cryptic names come from, if we look at the object ID and user objects for my table, you can see it's 9277, that's its object ID. If we look back up at the segment names for the lobs, you can see we have this system generated name, but it has the object ID and the number of the column. Address was the second column and, sorry, address was the third column and headshot was the fifth column. That's the naming standard. But once again, it's a little bit cryptic. We can do better in Oracle Database 23 AI because we have some new commands related to the names of clobs. In Oracle Database 23 AI, I can now alter a table and change the name of the clob segment or lob segment to anything I choose. Because I use my new value substitutions here, I've actually remembered what the two names of those lobs were. And I'm gonna rename the first one for the address to people call clob address. And I'm gonna rename the headshot to people call blob headshot. Once again, making it easier for DBAs to track the lob segments in their database. If I head back to user lobs and do the same queries for my address column, you can see now the lob is not some strange name, it's simply address p clob address. And if I do the same thing for my headshot column, you can see once again, it's got a nice, easy to remember, meaningful name. When I poke around in user segments and find those segments, it's gonna be much easier for me as a DBA to associate these things with their source tables. So this is just a small thing in Oracle Database 23 AI, but I think it's a really cool thing. Anything that makes the DBA or developer's life easier is generally gonna to lead to less human error, less manual mistakes, which makes our databases just that little bit more robust. Enjoy.